Meatball is like, are you gonna do another video about the bigger short? Did you just talk? The bigger short by The Intercept. What's going on, you guys? Wall Street's cooked books fueled the financial crisis in 2008. It's happening again. We're in about 15 minutes. We're going to have Austin Tobit join the show, and then we're going to see exactly what's up. What's up? If you guys join the live streams, of course, you'll be able to see these impromptu check-ins from DD Riders, congressmen, presidential advisors. Uh, thanks for clicking that subscribe button in advance. It helps us get to 100,000 six-figure subscriber count is what we're aiming for by our anniversary father's day of this channel it's coming up soon it would be nice to get there just about 10 weeks away the bigger short wall street's cooked books fueled the financial crisis in 2008 it's happening again seems very much like the six bullet points that we're sending to ro Khanna, a congressman that we had on the show as well as the everything short the dd that mr austin tobit wrote himself so let's see exactly how much of this article is reflected there. And as we dive straight in, make sure you guys stay until the end. Try to get this video up to 1,200 likes. If it's not quite there yet, comment out where you were, number blankety blank, and let's get going. It's only when the tide goes out that you learn who's been swimming naked. The billionaire investor Warren Buffett has famously said. During the crash of 2008, the whole world learned just how dangerously nude Wall Street was. Now evidence is accumulating that suggests that many financial institutions are skinny dipping once again via similar types of lending that could lead to similar disasters as the water recedes again due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Pretty clear, compelling, damning. Uh, it is a question of how many of these financial bets, how many of these risky investments are actually backed by money, backed by actual assets. You can have naked options, you can have naked shorts, and you can uh, essentially take these promises without anything backing them and run the entire global economy with them. Is it too late to back away? Let's see if this article can answer these questions. A longtime industry analyst has uncovered creative accounting on a startling scale in the commercial real estate market in ways similar to the liar loans handed out during the mid 2000s for residential uh, real estate, right? These mortgage backed securities, the MBS, uh, according to financial records examined by The Intercept. A recent large scale academic study backs up his conclusion, finding that banks like Goldman Sachs and Citigroup have systematically reported erroneously inflated income data that compromise is the integrity of resulting securities. We remember from the big short, right, the hot tub scene, we had uh, a lot of explanations of how these banks are reporting assets as triple A, very good, uh, but actuality, they're not backed by anything, and they're actually quite bad. Analyst finding first reported by ProPublica last year was the subject of a whistleblower complaint he filed in 2019 by the SEC. Uh, this article is quite long, so we want to be able to run through it. This time, the issue is not a bubble in the housing market, but apparent widespread inflation of the value of commercial businesses on which loans are based. Those who remember news coverage at the time know that the tail 2008 financial implosion involved an enormous swirl of numbers and acronyms. However, the, when it boiled down to its essence, it's simple. It's counterfeiting. Ah, perfect. Everything short, right? Counterfeit shorts. This is going to be pretty darn simple and a direct connection to the Everything Short written by Austin. Traditional counterfeiters print money, pieces of paper that supposedly are worth their face value, but in fact are worth nothing. Wall Street counterfeiters during the housing bubble printed securities, pieces of paper that were supposedly worth uh, their face value, but in fact were worth much less. In the mid-2000s, companies like Countrywide Financial Corp is sued, uh, issued so-called liar loans, often without informing the borrowers themselves, right? We can do this real quick with our Mr. Whiteboard here, which is just, uh, actually, let's use this one, which is just a piece of our Weeble dashboard. If you guys uh, want to follow us and use your own Weeble dashboard here, you can go ahead and grab it and get two free stocks in the description down below. Right here, we have the ability to be able to issue out a share of GME. However, you might not know that this share of GME is just something that I made up. Nobody issued it to me. I am just going to say that I will be able to borrow this from a Mr. John Doe, if you know what I'm saying, soon enough. This is a counterfeit short. I'm selling it to you, but I don't own it, and no one owns it. I'm not borrowing it from anyone that this imaginary person 
is someone that I have to locate. If I don't within a certain amount of time, it becomes an FTD. That's a different DD for a different day. But just so you know, this is currently the same situation with the shorting market here. But we're talking about a, uh, a liar loan instead. We're talking about what happened in the mid 2000s. The originating banks then took the loans, which could never be paid back on the bartender's real income and securitized them. Right. So let's say a bartender was making 500000 a year, allowing them uh, to borrow enough money to buy a home that they couldn't possibly afford. Uh, oh, yeah, that, uh, that's an overinflated number, that's for sure. It certainly seems like he should be able to afford a house if you say that he is making $500,000 a year. I'm not sure which bartender in the world is making that much money. These securities behave similarly to regular bonds, coming with a quality rating and interest rate that pay out. But these securities sold to credulous investors such as pension funds were the counterfeit paper of the period, remaining valuable as long as the home prices rose, which allowed the bartender to refinance or sell the property when the payments got out of hand. So that's a quick recap of that 2008 financial crisis. Let's skip through a little bit more. Now it's happening again, this time not with residential mortgage-backed securities based on loans for homes, but commercial mortgage-backed securities or CMBS based on loans for businesses. And this industry-wide scheme is colliding with the collapse of the commercial real estate market amid the pandemic, which has business tenants across the country unable to make their payments. Look at this picture here. Former Countrywide Financial Corp CEO Angel Angelo Mozilla <laughs> emerges from a courthouse after testifying in a wrongful dismissal suit. Uh, John M. Griffin and Alex Priest are respectively these two people here. You guys can check out the link in the description down below for a little bit more about them. Overall, actual net operating income falls short of underwritten income by 5% or more than um, or more in 28% of loans. This was just the average, however. Some originators, including an unusual group called Ladder Capital, as well as the Swiss bank UBS, Goldman Sachs, etc., were significantly worse, having more than 35% of their loans exhibiting 5% or greater income overstatement. The below graph uh, from the paper illustrates just how prevalent this issue is with some of Wall Street's biggest names. Here we go. So this is the proportion overstated, right? How much they lied on behalf of that bartender that's supposedly making $500,000 so that he can buy a bigger house than he can afford. And the number of people, uh, the number of banks on the x-axis. These are 95% intervals in case you're wondering what's going on with these uh, box and whiskers. So on the far end over here, we have UBS, right? We have Goldman Sachs and Citigroup really uh, overstating the uh, the value of these securities and over here we have some nicer but still overstating by uh, by up to 50 uh, sorry 20 percent uh, we have pnc and bellwether hff uh, some of these banks you probably haven't heard of the paper explains that the authors are interested in studying intentional income overstatement all right so we have more about the paper here these income overstatements might cause defaults under any circumstances, but it has been particularly dangerous in a severe economic downturn like the one caused by coronavirus pandemic. In a very sloppy analogy, it's like saying, hey, does, is anyone a doctor? Uh, because we need to get, to get as many doctors out there as possible. And these overstatements are saying, yeah, I'm a doctor. I took one pre-med class. And the people that have uh, overstated their income actually end up coming out on top. You probably have heard of most of these banks here, the Morgan Stanley's, the Citigroup's, the Goldman Sachs. The more that they overstate, the better they come out and essentially take advantage of the pandemic when everyone is trying to come out at, uh, in break even. Some of these banks are, if you saw that Q1 video, uh, how they have seemingly won Q1 despite the economic downturn, uh, you, if you haven't seen it yet, you should. That video basically says it all. The level of distress in the industry can be seen in this graph created by TREP, a company that produces a specialized database. An overall delinquency rate for commercial mortgage-backed securities shot up last year to the same level as the peak during the last economic collapse here. Okay, so we uh, charts are scary, I know, but let's read it together. This is the mortgage-backed securities delinquency rates here. And back in 2008, we had a major rise in this green mar uh, mark here, mostly, and this purple mark here, multifamily and lodging. These two lines have gone past this uh, red line here at 
uh, what we see here is that the GFC peak here was at 10.34% right back in this 2008 financial crisis. But the COVID market crisis, right, we see the green come back again with lodging, but orange now comes up with retail. So this is the brand new level of uh, the new mortgage-backed securities, not just the uh, lodging industry, but also the retail industry coming up far above 10%. And now, on average, the delinquency rates is getting uh, basically within a uh, <laughs> within a degree of error, almost the exact same as the GFC peak. This is not just the conclusion of academics. So we're looking in at John Flynn here, coming in. He comes across as the in, uh, very much like the investor Michael Burry in The Big Short. So you might be seeing Flynn in the future, big shorter, bigger short movie. Flynn's whistleblower complaint filed with the SEC states that he has identified about $150 billion in inflated CMBS issued by uh, since 2013 by banks like Wells Fargo and Deutsche Bank and the shadow bank ladder capital. It's easiest to understand what's happening in the CMBS market by looking at a single trust. So here's an example here. You guys can go look into this a little bit more. We're just speeding through it to make sure that we have the context for Austin and for you guys. Ladder Capital is known for the is best known for being one of the former President Donald Trump's biggest creditors. Uh, let's see. According to the documentation of a memo Flynn produced for journalists, he found notable problems with historical reporting for 12 of the 57 loans in this ladder company here. Continues on with this case study with what Flynn has, the research that Flynn has done with this uh, ladder, cap ladder Capital group here. Some, uh, let's see, for instance, if a previous lender had said a property had generated a certain amount of income in 2015, you would expect Ladder would provide the same number for that year, but in many cases it didn't. Sometimes the numbers weren't even close. So they're, uh, they're hyping you up. They're hyping up a team of people uh, who seem like they are you know, making a lot more money than they actually are and making it a lot easier for them to get loans, which they actually are, shouldn't be qualified for. If a previous lender had said a property, yeah, we just said that. Nice. Glad we can read this article critically. Okay, a little couple more, a little bit more about this Flynn case study here. And now let's finally read over here. Ironically, Ladder's Capital's website describes commercial real estate underwriting, i.e. the accurate assessment of the credit worthiness of borrowers as its core competency. Uh-oh. Sounds like uh, lying might be their core competency instead, or at the very least, allegedly, uh, they are hurting the truth and overall making the market run on a bunch of empty promises. That's the part of the story that's similar to 2008, but it gets even stranger. Ladder Capital does not just make loans. On its website explains it also engages in originating senior first mortgage fixed and floating rate loans collateralized by commercial real estate. So that means that they are not just looking at loans, but also looking at these uh, uh, mortgage fixed collateralized loans by more, uh, commercial real estate here. <laughs> Mr. Mix, I'll cover your super in a second. In other words, contrary to the uh, admonition, Add munition to neither a lender nor a borrower B, ladder was both in the same transaction. Now, this is getting to the level of Austin Tobit, uh, basically playing both sides. We saw that Citadel does something very similar with a sister uh, arm of its corporation. Uh, and I'm excited to see what he has to say about this breakthrough here that ladder is uh, acting as both a lender and a borrower. Okay, more about Flynn and the Ladder Capital. Something about the Dollar General. Just making sure that we have uh, a closing out of this case study here. So we know who seemingly benefits from LCCM 2017, LC26. The victim of it are more diffuse, but just as real. There are the investors, including pension funds and college endowments who will be left holding the bag if borrowers received larger loans than they could service and end up defaulting. Essentially, 2008 can happen again, and if it hurt your parents before, and they're still in the same job, uh, more or less, it will likely hurt them again just the same. So if you don't want that to happen, Make sure that we are actually calling out these large corporations, these banks, uh, for what they're doing, lying on their resumes. 
Let's see. This brings us to today. The pandemic has justifiably renewed concerns about the fragility of the CMBS market and the possibility of new commercial mortgage crisis, according to the memo from Quinn Emanuel Urku Hart and Sullivan, an international white shoe law firm that specializes in large scale complex lawsuits. There's been the firm warns a steady drumbeat of warnings regarding troubling origination and underwriting practices impacting the long term stability of the market. This has already been translated into litigation similar to that during the 2008 meltdown. In February, the SEC filed a lawsuit against a credit rating agency allegedly manipulating the CMBS ratings methodology, essentially making lying on your resume, essentially, making these people who don't qualify for certain loans end up seeming like they qualify for certain loans. Uh, last September, another credit rating agency paid $2 million in fines. Seems like another slap on the wrist. Honestly, $2 million in fines here seems much more like a kickback. Flynn believes that the reckoning is coming one way or another. It's incredible, but not surprising that Wall Street is repeating the same kind of shenanigans. Hey, nice shenanigans. Given that there was no real repercussions after the subprime crisis, CMBS borrowers and investors will face more frequent defaults and higher losses from these kind of issues as CMBS 2.0 credit and loan quality is laid bare by COVID-19. So we're off to welcome Austin to the show, but what do you guys think? Are you well protected by these uh, institutions that care much more about their bottom line, by a government that seems like uh, issuing fines is very similar to just receiving a kickback, not that the crime is ever going to actually be uh, reprimanded to the level that it's not going to happen. So when are we going to be able to find a regulatory system that actually works for the people? If you uh, enjoyed this video uh, and want to answer a couple of these questions or give at least give your thoughts, drop them in the comments below and make sure you've gotten your $250 of free Bitcoin down in the description from BlockFi and your $50 to f invest in anything you want from SoFi. Thank you for watching the show and for now but not for forever, we'll see you in the money.